Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from Bitemout.com and P.O. Combs Asian Art in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And today is our, no, November 8th, 2019, and this is our weekly uh, video. We'll look, take a look back at last week's eBay auction results, see what's going on over at Catawiki and uh, a little bit of other news. And uh, one of the things I wanted to mention was the sales uh, in London uh, did pretty well. They were kind of spotty, though. There were some things, there were some holes uh, uh, that didn't do very well. They were Some of them were things we talked about in the, in the video during the preview uh, 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 taping that we did, uh, things that we thought might have a bit of trouble. They did have a bit of trouble and didn't get sold. And uh, that's the way it is. In the market, it continues to be very selective. Uh, the Japanese uh, sales were uh, very spotty. It was high to tell what was going on. The, the, some great things did very well and other things never got off the ground. So we'll get through those. We're going to do the video next week and uh, we'll post it probably the middle of the week or so. All right. Now on to uh, this past week. There was some nice things on uh, eBay this week that did pretty well. Um, in particular, some of the featured items uh, did just fine. And uh, let's get started. We'll start right here, this robe. This was a nice robe. This is an informal robe, obviously, a lady's informal robe. Nice deep cobalt blue. Very similar to another one that sold last week uh, that we talked about. This is uh, almost uh, almost identical, not quite. And uh, it brought about the same price. Uh, this is an early, late 19th, early 20th century robe. Brought $811, and I think the one last week brought around 830 or something. So that seems to be the price range for these these days. All right, it's not a formal robe, it's not a dragon robe. These were produced and a lot of them found their way to the West. Uh, uh, so so you're, you're likely, more likely to see these turn up in estates uh, around the United States and in Europe than you, than you uh, will the dragon robes, which bring, of course, you know, five, ten times as much money as this. All right, and then on to this. I like these old wood carvings. I, I, I feature them whenever I see them. And this was a nice one, late 19th, early 20th century with glass eyes. And it has a, a, the recumbent uh, sort of sort of emaciated Leon with his foo lion on a nicely a nicely done open work separate stand. Here's a picture of the stand. That's how they did them. This is a nice one. Maybe it was done in the 20s, judging by it. But the carving was good, and it ended up bringing $520. And this thing was uh, how big was this? Somebody asked me. I should always say the say the um, uh, the the size. Um, 13 uh, inches uh, in length. So it was about 13 inches wide from side to side, uh, a little over a foot. So it was a nice size one, and it went for $520. All right, and then popping over to here was this uh, this very nice hat stand. This was a good-looking one. Uh, had that gray, uh, uh, black ink uh, groundwork with iron red monkeys and this ascending dragon and a, and a boar on it, all kinds of animals. There's a tiger. It was a really nice hat stand. And uh, it did pretty well. It brought nine hundred and ten dollars. And this is a early twenty, late nineteenth, early twentieth century one again. Uh, it has zodiological symbols on it, which is rather unusual. Uh, and it did fine. This was ancient arts over in the Netherlands that had this. He had some nice things up. And then we had this pair of uh, export plates, probably for the Dutch market. Uh, this is a, a well-known pattern, uh, and they used it with a variety of uh, crests and shields and whatnot on it, from diff representing different families. Uh, but it was a nice-looking uh, 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 street scene. Uh, and this is, uh, let's see, this is uh, the, the armorial crest of Mills and Paling Weber. And it was done around 1745, 1750, somewhere in there. And the pair sold for $1,025 which was a perfectly reasonable price for a good pair of armorial plates in good condition, very reasonable. And the seller on this was a fellow up in Portsmouth, New Hampshire, who had uh, a number of pretty good Chinese export pieces, and we'll, we'll see a few more of them in a minute, and they brought a lot more money than that. All right, and then over here was this uh, 18th century uh, dish with the animals. Rather unusual, pretty unusual coloring on this. Uh, you see these, uh, these, these, these bears or pigs or whatever they are. I can't quite make out what they are. Usually on these trees, they use squirrels. These clearly are not squirrels. Here's a picture of the back of it. Nice 18th century foot, probably Chen Lung, to, maybe Yong Chen. He says Yong Chen. I, I'm not so sure. But at any rate, it's a nice plate, and it brought $388. Uh, but but a good example, nice example, and the enamels were in good shape and had unusual coloring. 
And then over here, the rank badges. The rank badges did well. Still, a good Chinese rank badges continue to do quite well. And this was a nice one with a heron on it and bats and uh, lots of good detail work uh, all through it. He had a whole bunch of uh, silks up. We're going to go through a few of them. Uh, but this had nice work on it. Good condition. The condition is so important on silk. And it brought $860. I think this was a particularly good buy. I think this was pretty reasonable. Uh, I thought it. I thought this would bring a little bit more, maybe twelve or thirteen hundred. Uh, so somebody, I think, got a very nice buy on that. And then over here, he had this roundel with a dragon on it. Chinese uh, silk roundel circles uh, always have buyers. Always, for some reason, people just love these things. And this was a five-clawed dragon, nice Shao character at the top of it. And you have the crashing waves at the bottom. Same pattern that was used on robes, endless knots, and other uh, auspicious symbols. And uh, it did pretty well. It brought $1,386. Not surprised by that. A few weeks ago, I think... A couple of months ago, I guess, we had uh, one that brought, uh, I think it was 2800 The colors were a little stronger than this one, but uh, still 1300 is perfectly reasonable for one of these. All right. And then on to this. This one did very well. This had really crisp colors, pretty similar to the other one. These are all coming from the same seller. And this one has the the, the, the uh, 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 line in the center. And again, bats and peaches, which are auspicious for uh, uh, is, a, is a birthday thing. And then you have the Buddhist flaming wheel down here. Lots of interesting stuff going on with this this silk, and it was in beautiful shape. And this did very well. It brought eighteen hundred and twenty-five dollars, and it was about the same condition as the one that sold for eight hundred. And I don't think eighteen hundred and twenty-five was unreasonable, but boy, eight hundred for the other one, I think, was a really great buy. Uh, maybe the same guy bought both of them. Who knows? That happens too. And then over here, we had. You remember last week we had some of these. Rock, they call them Rockefeller plates. Uh, there was a pair of platters that uh, Chamberlain had up. Juice uh, Chamberlain Antiques had up. Um, the username is Juice One Four Nine Nine. Here's another one, and this is from a, from a, a different seller, but also in New Hampshire. So I have a feeling there was a set of these that was uh, sold off somewhere up there, and uh, maybe at Northeast Auctions, um, and. Um, this fellow bought these. This is an armorial one, which makes it a bit more desirable. And uh, if you remember the one last week, there was a lot of the gilding was missing. On this one, the gilding is all uh, in pretty good shape. Uh, wasn't worn off too badly. And this plate brought $4,550. And you may remember last week, the, the, the platters brought uh, in that range maybe a little more. Uh, but uh, but the, this one, the condition, again, is key on these. All right. And here was another one that he had. Um, that was this is the same seller, another or another one with another crest. So I, I'm pretty certain this all was coming out of a person that collected these. Another Rockefeller plate with a figure on a chair on the terrace being approached by a lady. Nicely done. Again, very, the gilding overall was in quite good condition. And this one brought $4,050. All right, so you now have a pretty good idea what these are worth. So if you're in an antique shop, you're, you, you, you quite easily could run into one of these in an antique shop somewhere uh, because the average dealer, if they don't know about these, um, is going to price them at around the same price as Rose, Rose Mandarin or you know more typical uh, 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 early 19th century uh, plates. And uh, the, the, this particular pattern is obviously worth a lot more. So uh, keep your eyes out for those, all right? And then over here to the bronze, this was that nice bronze uh, from a seller in, in Europe. Uh, good looking thing, La Qing Dynasty, uh, but a, a nice example. Good handles on it, good dragon handles. He had it listed as, as Yuan. I don't think it was. I think it was late Ming or early Qing. And it brought $1,278. And he also had a, another one uh, that we'll get to in a minute. But I wanted to talk about this. This is a wonderful uh, 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 export plate, probably Yongchen period. Uh, and uh, the condition of this plate was absolutely outstanding. Really, really was. Notice that all the gilding is in good condition. There's no evident wear to the, uh, to, to the rocks or the enamels anywhere in here. 
Uh, here's the back of it. That's your very typical uh, uh, Yongchen to Qinlung period foot rim. A uh, little iron oxide yellowing on here. But you got to be careful because they stain these now to look old. And if you look at the where, where the discoloration is that slight uh, brownish or tan toning, uh, it looks. if you look at it carefully, it looks applied. And also the back of this, fortunately, if you notice down here, uh, this, this very fine, slight peel with little dimples in the glaze, that's all very typical of real ones. The copies tend to have much wavier um, uh, orange peel in the glaze. The texture is much more noticeable. And if you see heavy orange peel on a plate that's supposed to be Young Chen, be very suspicious of it. And uh, here's another shot. There's another shot again. And uh, he did a great job showing that there was not a lot of wear to the enamels. Notice the gilding is all in beautiful condition. Just a dandy plate. And uh, in the end, it did quite well. It brought $810 for one of these. Okay. Um, these, if they're worn and chipped, uh, they too do turn up in this pattern. It's just, it was sort of a stock pattern. Um, they, it, with wear and tear to the enamels, they bring less than half that amount. But in good condition, they can do just fine. And then over here to another uh, bronze incense burner, Ming Dynasty. Uh, but nicely done, had a little bit of a divot out of this part right up here, which probably uh, impacted the price a bit. But a nice early bronze. Here's a side view of it. Another shot, okay. There's the underside. Here's the interior. Lots of legitimate looking wear. And um, it brought $641, which was very reasonable. Uh, that was a nice bronze, nice old bronze, good undisturbed surface. And uh, there you go. All right. And then over here to this, the uh, Famille Rose, uh, 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 the, sort of the ascending uh, f pheasant uh, dish. Uh, b beautiful colors, nicely shaped rim. This is an early 20th century example, I believe. Some people think these are always 19th century. I don't think so. Um, this particular foot turns up on an awful lot of Republican dishes. Here's a detail of it. It's got a bit of kiln grit on it and the way it's drawn and so forth, sort of a bit along the lines of, of these uh, straits porcelain. And uh, it did fine. It brought $621, and it was in nice condition. Uh, this was a seller... Um, endorse it in the UK that gets uh, pretty good things all right and then on to this the uh, the uh, Kangxi uh, molded and uh, a ring handled vase with a Chen Hua mark uh, this was a nice example this is a well-known type this form originated in the Ming dynasty and was carried forward into the Qing dynasty you'll see these big uh, 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 green enamel and Wukai uh, 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 and Senkai glazed vases very similarly uh, done Here's a picture of the bottom of it. There we go. Uh, pretty typical of these. Here's a nice detail of it. And uh, it ended up going for $794. It was about 8 inches tall. Nice looking thing. Nice looking porcelain. This was from the seller Pastimes over in Newcastle. And then on to this. I think this was sort of a nifty buy. It's a Kangxi Chinese Amari uh, tea caddy with a, a, a very lovely silver uh, cap added on to it, which was pretty common in, in, when, um, when these things reached Europe. They would often add silver onto them, as many of you have seen in the past. But what was interesting about this tea caddy was the pattern on it. It's quite unusual. It's got plants growing up. Usually they're framed a bit more. Uh, but this is individual plants in underglazed blue and then iron red with gilt coming up around the sides. Here's the end of it with more of them coming up and then more of them on the other side. It had a fair bit of fritting to the edges. Uh, these Kangxi tea caddies often have fritting all along these edges where, where it makes, makes the turn, so to speak, and they bubble and pop off a bit. And this one had a bit of that. But I think the form and the pattern was very interesting. I think whoever bought this was made a smart buy because it's an unusual pattern on these. And uh, if, you, if you like Kung Shi pieces, it's a good one. And look at this. It went for $113. Like I said, leave a bit. That was a great buy. Okay, that was a really good buy for an unusual pattern. If you look up some of these Chinese Amari tea caddies, you're going to look a long time before you find this pattern. Long time. You're not going to find it in many places. So it's taken from a plate probably. All right, and then over here to this, this ghee decorated late 19th century, but has the uh, gold thread crackle and the black crackle uh, running around it, which makes it quite interesting and nice. And it had a hairline in it somewhere. And it's been used as gunk and goo on the inside of it. Here's a picture of the bottom, pretty typical for these, but a nice example 
Um, here's the hair. Here's the line going right through it. And uh, I, but it's a, it's an interesting piece. It's a scholar's piece. That's why we included it uh, last week in the newsletter. Um, we try to find things that uh, will appeal to people for its, you know, for its use and so forth. And it only went for four hundred and twenty-one dollars, which I think was quite reasonable. Had that not had the hairline in it, probably would have brought uh, double or triple that because uh, it was a, it was a nice a, a nice example. So um, whoever got it, good. I liked it. And then on to this, this late 19th, early 20th century Famille Rose Crackle Glaze Planter. This was an unusual planter, and it was beautifully painted. The decoration on this was really, really nice, beautifully done. And the crackle was just the right size pattern uh, for the decoration, so it all worked together really well. And uh, here's another shot of it. Uh, whoever, whoever did the decorating on these flowers really shaded them in beautifully. And then you have this nice, uh, this nice blue all outlined in black around the leaves and so forth. Good looking thing. Here's a detail of it. And there were some nice legitimate pits and so forth in the glaze. And uh, in the end, it brought $1,318, which I think was very uh, reasonable. It was a really nice planter. And as I always say, I hope whoever bought it, if you're watching and you bought this, put a good-looking plant in it. Enjoy it. All right. Uh, it drives me crazy when people buy planters or vases and they never use them as, as vases to hold flowers, for example. If you have a nice vase, fill it with flowers. They're, they look great. Okay. And uh, let's see over here. Uh, this was something on Catawiki. was that pair of um, uh, trumpet vases or sleeve vases with flared mouths and artisma leaf base bottom decorations. Nice figural scenes. And they have these uh, lotus devices running around the top forming the pattern and then repeated with a slight variation in the bottom. These were quite attractive. Here's the back of them. Uh, very nice, uh, the way the rocks are done, this reflecting rock, the way they do Kangxi, I always call it reflecting rock. I don't know what the actual name most people give it is, but uh, with the, the way the rock comes down and that light edge where the sun would hit it. And uh, this, these did pretty well. They brought $1,612. They were a nice looking pair of vases though, really were, very attractive. And they also had this pair of uh, garlic mouth vases. Um, Beautifully done, Kung Shi period again, uh, probably about 10 inches tall, I think, something like that. Let me see you know, how tall were these. See if the height is in here, easy to get. Uh, yeah, eight, eight inches tall, there you go, 25 centimeters, seven or eight inches tall. And the, the pair brought $1,591, which I think was very reasonable. I think it was a very reasonable price. There's a picture of the bottom. All right, now over here to what's coming up this week. Um, this is on right now. It was this really nice uh, Wan Li late Ming uh, uh, double gourd vase. Uh, very nice looking enamels on it. Uh, well done. Uh, the, the neck has these sort of chevron devices running down it. And then precious objects alternating with beaches and flowers around the, around the upper section and so forth. Here's another shot of it from that side. You have the big fan leaves and all that business going on. And uh, it's up to uh, $1,450. It closes in two days, so Sunday. This will close on Sunday this weekend if you want to come and take a look at that. It is 23 centimeters tall, so it's about s seven or so inches tall in size. But a nice early example. Good looking early example. And I have to say, the, the London sales this week, there were, there were a number of them. Uh, uh, late Ming and early Qing, Kangxi things, and they all did pretty well. They all did pretty well. And we'll be, when we do the video, we'll go through it. All right, and then there's this tile. I like this tile. This is a dandy little tile. It's a nice size. It's uh, um, 205 millimeters, so it's about, what is it, about eight inches wide or something, and anyway, it's seven inches wide, but a nice looking one. Underglaze blue, nice cobalt, uh, uh, deep cobalt running all the way around it, and the gilding on it is in beautiful condition. Tiles, for some reason, often the gilding really gets rubbed off of them. Um, I don't know why, but this is a nice one, and I like the whole scene, and I love the gilding. It really gives it, uh, really brightens it up. And uh, here's the side shot of it. There you go. Here's the back of it, and uh, it's got some glue or residue on it. And uh, this is up to $156. It closes on Sunday also. And then over here, this is a China trade uh, painting on reverse painting on glass, 18th century. Um, it's a rather nice one. It has a very uh, atmospheric surface to it because it's it's got a bit of deterioration on the back. The, they reverse painted these. Sometimes the glass 
um, because of age and time, it peels off, and you get these blotchy areas on there. Some of them, are, and, and a lot of the ones that turn up in the market that look absolutely perfect, it's because they've been restored. But this is a nice old one. I like the feeling of it. I like the old frame. I like the uh, the Chinese lady seated with a uh, little young man playing the flute um, along a stream. There's a house in the background. Nice looking thing. And uh, it's up to, uh, uh, let's see here, $669. And uh, we'll see how that does in the end. It's a, it's a, it was a decent size. It was like a foot square, wasn't it? Yeah, foot by a little over a foot, 13 by, uh, I don't know, 15 inches. So it's not too small. Um, shipping, it'll be a trick because it is on glass, but they can, they can do it. Uh, but that's a nice piece, and I like the frame. I like the whole package. Very, very charming. And then over uh, back on eBay, the ceramics and the collectibles have this nice Femi Ver uh, uh, dish right here with the birds and so forth. They always have nice things. And uh, that closes in a few days, closes on Monday. And then they had this this crayfish dish, or they call it lobster. But uh, it's, it's a koamari, Japanese. It's just, I love that pattern. This is a very interesting dish. With, 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 the, with the crustacean on it right in the center, eating up the whole central scene. It's got some interest. It's got two days to go, and it's up to $293. Uh, but I, I think it's very unusual. It's a 17th century dish. Uh, really interesting pattern. Really interesting pattern. And then over here, uh, just as a reminder, uh, Qing period has a whole bunch of stuff up that closes on Sunday, Sunday night. A um, lot of pieces, 57 lots. The stuff's gotten some interest, but it's it's all good stuff uh, from what we can sell. Some good silver, cafe au lait bowls, lime green jars, who form jars, and so on and so forth, right down the page. Uh, there's no Japanese stuff in here, as far as I can recall. Some coral. Uh, and everything, and we'll have one of the one of the items like we did last week. We'll have one of them featured at the top of the newsletter. So when you get there today, you can you can go over and then you can see all you can click the the link and open up and see all the listings. Uh, some nice things in there, though. He's a, he's a good seller. I wish he sold more on eBay, but um, he comes back every couple months with some great things. All right. So the, that's it for the week. Like I said, we'll be doing the uh, um, video for the London sales. Uh, Christie's, Bonhams, and Sotheby's, some interesting results from all three. And um, the, uh, the the global newsletter page is uh, about to be uh, uh, finally finished in the next week. As I said, I thought a couple of weeks ago it would be a couple of weeks, and it has been a couple of weeks because there's some uh, plugins and things we have to make. And we may be moving the site again, I suspect. Uh, we have uh, discovered a service uh, that I think will do a better job than who we're using currently. So we may be uh, migrating the site, um, which is going to be a, a bit of an upgrade, but we kind of have to. All right. Have a great weekend. If you haven't subscribed yet here on uh, YouTube, please do. Um, hit the notification button to get uh, a heads up when we post new videos. Come over to bitamount.com and sign up for the weekly newsletter and poke around, use the forum, use the reference books, and have fun. And uh, we'll be back next week with the uh, auction uh, uh, results from over, in the, over in, in, in the U.K. All right. I hope everybody has a great weekend. It's supposed to be really cold here tonight, 18 degrees. Winter has come back upon us. We had light snow flurries this morning. And uh, that's the way it is on the North Shore of Boston. Okay. Have a great weekend. See you all next time. Thank you. Bye-bye.